connecting. And all right, you are good. So you'll be able to share your screen and everything. Cool. Thank you, Susie. You're um, welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, I, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Brian Carroll. I work up at the middle high school. I teach English. I'm the English department head, and I've got um, eighth graders and some high school students this year. Um, nothing, I don't think sort of revolutionary in what I'm about to share, but more kind of like little um, Google like tips that I think will make life easier. And, and may, and may, I don't know, maybe, maybe one of them will be a little bit revolutionary or, or just maybe change the way you think about kind of putting together the learning plans. Um, so there's five in total. Um, I, I'm sorry that I don't have any like, like slides or anything to share with you. I'm just going to go through them on here. Um, please holler if you have questions. I don't mind slowing down or whatever, going over something again. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and um, Susie, will you give me a shout if there's a chat or something that I'm not going to see? Because um, I'm going to have my, um, I'm just going to kind of walk you through that. Absolutely. I will be your, your hostess. Thank you. Um, so, um, the first is this, this, this actually like was really useful in the spring. Um, but I, but I've, um, kind of found it useful again, uh, this year, I, I rather, I expect to find it useful again this year. And it is that you can see who has viewed your, um, Google files of all sorts. I'm in a doc right now, um, but you can do it for slides too. And what the, the situation in which I found this most useful was like trying to communicate with parents and students and not really sure who was actually getting what I was sending. You know, I would send emails of sort of explaining things, but didn't really know like if they were getting them or reading them or processing them. So um, I started putting stuff in docs, which probably is a little annoying for them because it's an extra stuff. But it allowed me to check and see who had opened the doc. So um, this little like kind of um, squiggly line, like lightning bolt, my cursor's flipping over it. I hope you can see it. Um, it says document editors can see your view. So if you've created a doc or you are an editor, you can see who's actually opened the file. Um, you know, this is just access. If you want to see, this is sort of an addendum to, to this function, but if you want to see who's like edited the file or if, if like, you know, one of the things that we've been talking about doing as an English department that I think will be helpful is um, having some shared docs that the kids are working in together from different locations. So you can go back and check and see who's actually edited the doc. Um, you know, it'll, it'll show you kind of in sequence um, down to here and you can look at previous versions that's nice. This is nice to just see who has accessed a doc slides or whatever, um, which kind of buttons up your communication a little bit, perhaps. Um, something else, and this I'm, I'm not sure it's super useful for right now, but it's, or like in particular right now, but I've just found it useful kind of over time, which is an extension that allows you to save um, websites into Google Drive. So I'm, I'm sort of really try to keep my drive organized. I've got all sorts of folders and folders within folders, um, kind of for all the different types of things that I'm doing. And you know, you can bookmark, of course, across the top, but if you ever wanna have like a, um, you know, if you've got a, a, a unit folder for something you're teaching and it's in drive, separate from, from your classroom, but like where you're keeping your material, you just wanna have a link in it, and this is, allows you to do that. You can, without this extension. Um, so the way you would do it is to go to the Chrome web store. I'm, I'm on it here. The address is chrome.google.com forward slash web store. And if you just run a Google search for Chrome web store or Chrome extension, either one is fine. So this is an extension and it is called Save to Google Drive. Um, I've got this little green kind of banner up here because I've already added it. Um, it will then appear up here. So I'm just going to do it now for Newzella. Um, so save to drive it's called. And it like puts, a, puts, a, puts the link itself into your Google Drive. Um, you can adjust the folder that you have it in if that helps. 
Um, but it's just a way to kind of keep track of websites and with, uh, we're all juggling so many um, electronic resources right now. Um, and they've sort of become the currency in a lot of ways. I thought that would be helpful to share. Um, this um, number three uh, is, is um, how to control email notifications in classroom. Um, I think this is useful for both the teachers and the students um, up at the middle high school and, and probably I'm gonna bet down for you guys in, in Quash and Coons too, we're putting a lot more emphasis on email um, and, and encouraging students to access it and, and using classroom, you know, we're all using classroom pretty regularly. Um, so, however, um, classroom will just flood your email. Um, if you are, if your student, from the student's point of view, is so up to us, they're, they're enrolled in seven courses plus a row, and every time a teacher posts something in the classroom, it sends them an email. And every time there is a comment on a post in classroom from another student, it sends them an email. And every time a teacher makes an adjustment to an assignment in classroom, it sends them an email. Which means like in a given day, the students are getting hundreds of emails, which obviously is untenable and would drive any of us crazy. And the kids don't really know how to handle an email to begin with, much less if they've got like literally hundreds and hundreds of emails. So um, this I would really encourage showing your students how to control. Um, and you may want it too if you're enrolled in courses or if you're getting lots of notifications from students. So the way you're gonna get there is like from any old any place, anywhere you are in classroom. Um, this little like hamburger thing in the top left brings you to your menu. And down at the bottom of it is your settings. Um, I'll run through that again. So you're just in you know classroom.google.com and you click on the hamburger thing and down at the bottom is settings. Here's where you, it's pretty straightforward, just one click and then you're here, and you can control which emails you receive and students can do the same thing. So uh, I want to know some stuff, like I want to know if, if students are commenting in class, but I don't have to like go to classroom to check that. I want to get an email. I want to know if kids are mentioning me or whatever, or I want to know if students are putting in private comments because that may be like, hey, I'm, I'm having trouble with this, or would you want to look at this or whatever? So, and I don't want to be, be actively going into classroom to find that I want a kind of notification. So I've got those on. I have these off right now because I'm not in any courses that are like I'm kind of actively following notifications from. And then um, these are classes you teach. The kids do look a little different, but um, you get to control the how much email you get. And I and I would re again really encourage uh, us to kind of keep in mind from the student's perspective how much email they're getting as well and, and maybe walk them through how to turn off um, at least some of the email notifications that they're getting. Um, I'll pause for a sec and um, do we, ha we have any questions or anything? No, so far so good. I know your sound is kind of coming in and out so we're just we're able to hear most of what you're saying but there might be questions at the end but other than that you're good. Keep going. Okay, um, that's funny with the sound. Um, I was my department said that same thing earlier. Yeah, um, I know. I'm not sure. I'll have to investigate that further. Um, okay, so two more. Um, one of which I think will be helpful for the playlists, and it's also related to classroom. Um, so when you guys have, who've used classroom before know that w when you um, create an assignment. So I'm just, I've just gone to classroom. I'm just now, I don't have anything here because this is a new classroom this year. Um, and you go to create an assignment, you can manage, um, and then and then so create an assignment and you want to put your playlist there. Um, you, when you go to do it, you manage, um, so I'll just put one in. So I've got my, okay, my kind of like intro or my, um, um kind of intro project playlist so um you selected you know a document that you're going to put into classroom uh, that you want the kids to be able to have access to the my sort of like default is to typically think that i want to make a copy for each student because so when, when you post the classroom um you get to control kind of what happens to the document as you as it kind of goes up as, as it gets loaded up the classroom you know, if you're 
posting like a worksheet that you want each student to be able to fill out, you want to do it as a make a copy for each student. But for your playlist, this was sort of just like a, a like an epiphany moment a little bit. Um, if you do it as a make a copy for each student, you lose control of it. So you can't make updates or changes or anything. So if you're putting together a, a learning plan or a playlist that's like several days or even weeks long, and you're like, oh, I'd like to go change that because something happened that I need to push this back, change the schedule or whatever, or I want to add some resource or just make a change to the line because the kids are interested in this and I want to give them access to something new. Um, if you've made a copy for each student, you can't, you have to repost it. And obviously that's going to get just confusing really quickly. However, if you post it as students can view file, so this is just for your playlist. This is like for your, the document that you're using to deliver resources to the students. If you keep it as view, you can go in and make changes and the students will see the updated version. So I'll say that again, one more time kind of quickly. When you're posting a, a, um, a resource to classroom, if you keep it as view file, you they're they're still accessing the same original file. They're still going to be kind of like looking at your your copy rather than a new copy. So you can make changes, and when they go to open it, it'll it'll be reflected there. If you set a copy for each student, you don't control it anymore. And if you want to make changes, then you've got to resend it or resend repost to the classroom or whatever. Um, we still cool on questions? Yes, you're doing great. Cool. Uh, last thing, and this is not necessarily kind of hybrid or remote learning, but just something that I've, I really value and I've mentioned it to some other teachers and that I find to be very useful. And it is that I like to have a session and pardon my like the horrific shape of my email inbox, um, I like to have tabs open and I also leave emails open sort of or leave emails marked as unread until I resolve the issue. Um, so that's why I have so many, sorry about that. Um, so uh, one thing that I found that is really useful is the fact that you can archive emails instead of deleting them. And that allows you to still search for the email and find it in search rather than deleting it completely. So, you know, if say I wanted to delete this email, typically if you wanted to delete it and make it kind of go away forever, you'd go and click on the delete. The archive button is just here and the archive button just like takes it out of your inbox, but it doesn't delete it. So say you like have made a book order or say you sent a resource to a teacher or whatever and you just or gotten a resource from another teacher and you just like you want to kind of try to click it down, but you can't find it. Um, I can now find that in my search because it's been archived rather than deleted. So um, just a kind of like useful little tip. I kind of tend to not delete anything and just archive. I don't know what the consequences of that are for storage or anything, um, but at least for school stuff, um, I haven't hit the button yet. So um, that's archiving email instead of deleting it. And those are five little tricks that might be helpful at some point. You yeah. already taught me. Yeah, you taught me a few things. So I'm glad I'm in your little class. Oh, good. <laughs> Anyone have questions for Brian or anything that was new to you or? I usually would say to my students, any comments or connections? I know that the, um, the sound broke up a little bit, but other than that, yeah, I'm not sure why that is. I'm on my like district laptop trying to keep my body still so that my um, <laughs> video doesn't have to process me. more movement. <laughs> right. Yeah. It could um, be the eight. It could be the 800 tabs you have open. <laughs> it could be the 800 tabs that I have open. Yep. Right. Yep. It's funny what you, some of what you were doing. I'm going to share my screen for a second. That relates to what you were talking about. If I click share. Um, Another thing that you can do with your little mash, your little, um, what do you call them? Your little bookmarks. Let's say like McGraw-Hill right now, I have it in my bookmark bar. If I right click on it and I go to edit, if I really know that that is the McGraw-Hill um, logo and I don't have to, oops, I don't have to worry about 
the words next to it, if I right click on it and I do edit, let's see if it, there we go. I can take the name all the way out and then do save and it leaves the M there. And I know that's McGraw Hill. If it was a Google, if it was a Facebook, if it was a Twitter, if it was a whatever, if I know that this is the Lexia symbol, I don't need it to say Lexia next to it. It gives you more room in that bar to fit more things. If you take the words out and you just leave there, um, I think it's a favicon or a, I don't know how to say it, favicon, favicon. So just a, another organizational tip. And the other thing you can do in seeing Brian's tabs is that you can pin them. If there's things that you know you're gonna open every day, you can take and pin them. So let's say this is the district landing page and I certainly know I open that every day. I can right click on it and I can pin it. So now it'll pop over here to the side. It takes up less space and I can access it pretty easily as well. It allows you to fit more tabs. You just spurred that in me when you were sharing earlier, Brian. I've got lots of pin tabs there. It's a little bit out of control. <laughs> I'm working on that. Oh, too funny. All right, any questions? I'm going to hit stop on recording unless anyone has a question. In five, three, one, okay.